So it is 1130 at night. We have been traveling for most of the day. We started the day in Pittsburgh at 10 a.m. with a rally there, a rally that kind of turned into a march and it was really cool actually. And then we went straight to the airport, got on an airplane, came to Atlanta where we were doing a rally tomorrow, which will be Sunday, November 1st, um, which is probably when this video will get posted. Uh, and it is our last rally of this tour. And I just, I, I, we just went out to dinner and I don't know, I was thinking about this all dinner that I just felt kind of compelled to come back to the room and just record some reflections. And guys, I really, I'm doing this off the cuff. I have kind of some bullet points I want to hit on, but really this is not, I don't script videos in general. And this video is even less scripted than what I, what I usually even do. But I've been so incredibly blessed this year. I've been so incredibly blessed. I have been blessed with um, launching into this new avenue for me because if you had told me that, if you had told me on January 1st, 2020, that this would be my life now, I would have thought you were insane. You know, people don't believe that. People, I just got into an argument with someone earlier where they're convinced that I'm doing things I'm doing out of branding or you know, someone affair just to, to, and, and that's like, that's, that's the most absurd thing that I've ever heard in my life. I honestly, like, it, it made me sad because they were so passionate that, about this idea. And I was like, I was having to stifle laughter because it was just not true. Um, I've never planned out any of this. And I said to myself from the very beginning, back in February, when I went to that Trump rally and I wrote the article about it and it, went viral and it launched all of this. That is That article is the reason that I'm doing all of this today. Um, back then, I really questioned whether or not I wanted to do this. I, You know, you guys have heard me say, if you watch my channel regularly, I never wanted to do this. I never wanted to be on YouTube. That was never a thing. I hate being on camera. I hate having my picture taken. Um, I just, it's not my jam at all. And, I, you know, that whole thing, I said to myself, if you're going to do this, if you're going to try to do this, there is a re see, here's the thing. I firmly believed from the very beginning that there was a reason that that happened. I, you guys, I, I talk about my spiritual, uh, my spirituality, my faith on occasion on this channel. Um, and I do actually want to start talking about more of that. I want to start integrating more of those concepts. And I know some of you find them, woo, woo, whatever. But um, I firmly believed from the very beginning that that Trump rally article was not written by me came through me. It came through me from God. That's what I believe from a higher source, from source, God's source, the one true energy. Um, and I believed it was inspired, um, because it felt different to write it from anything I've ever written in my life. And if you believe truly as I do, that that was divinely inspired, then you have an obligation to follow that path. I believe that we're all here for a purpose. I believe that we're all on a, on a path of our own, of our own choosing. Um, something we choose before we even come here. And it seemed as though that was the moment that my butt got booted onto the path that I was supposed to be on. But I always said from the very beginning, if you're going to follow this, if you're going to speak up, if you're going to say what you think, I didn't know what form it would take at the time. I didn't know I'd be doing YouTube right now. I didn't, I had no idea. But I always said, if you're going to do this, you're going to live authentically. You're going to be true to yourself. You're going to say what you think. And you're going to express your emotions on the world stage. You know, emotional expression for me um, is something interesting. It's something that Joshua and I have always talked about as being very key to my success, is my ability to emotionally express myself. And what I've learned on this journey of traveling around the country, doing these rallies every single week, is that when people see other people emotionally expressing themselves, being authentic, being true to themselves, standing up for what they believe in, that inspires them to do the same. And we need people out there that are willing to do it and that are tough enough to take the backlash that inevitably comes with it to inspire other people. Now, I never thought I would be one of those people, but it seems to be the position that I'm in. And um, I can only count that as a blessing. And I can only, you know, and, and I think that there's evidence that that's the position I'm supposed to be in for some reason. For so, And I have no idea what that reason is, but for some reason, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So let me go back to practical for a second. We've been 
traveling around the country for four months now. We started in Baltimore, where we did a rally that, that almost no one attended. It was so hot that day. I remember it was so hot. It was like 95 degrees out. I was wearing jeans and I was I was dying. It was so hot. Like almost no one showed up. And um, so it was, like, it was a lackluster start. And, and Mikey and Shamika and Brandon and I were like, so we were like, oh my God. And I just said, guys, it's just practice. It's just practice. Then Brandon went to Sacramento without us. Um, but a week after Sacramento, uh, we went to Los Angeles. And that was, I think, the game-changing rally in this whole thing. I mean, some would argue, and I don't know if this is true, but those the, those big Trump rallies that we see in Beverly Hills right now, every I, w- I was so jealous, by the way, that I couldn't go to the rally, the, this last rally before the election, because it looked awesome. Um, but I think that the walkaway rally in Beverly Hills actually started those rallies because our rally was huge in Beverly Hills. It was amazing. It was awesome. It was one of the best days I've ever experienced. And that for me was like really the start of this. And since then we went to Chicago, we've been to uh, Pittsburgh, we've been to Philadelphia, we've been to Nashville, we've been to Tampa, Sarasota, we've done Trump boat parades, we've done Trump caravans, we've been chased by Black Lives Matter in Dallas. Um, It has been an insane, I got kicked out of a hotel in Milwaukee for something I didn't do. Like it's been an insane, (laughs) <laughs> this has been an insane ride and um every moment of it is a blessing and every moment of it i've i've done my level best to say what i think and be true to myself now i don't know how this election is gonna go i don't know i think trump's gonna win i think he's gonna actually not i don't listen if you haven't voted yet don't take this as an excuse to not vote i don't think it's actually gonna be close i think it's actually gonna be a pretty big victory um I feel good about it. But even if he doesn't, it almost doesn't make a difference. There's a bigger picture going on here. And what I see is that this is a time for people to stand up and to be brave. Um, One of the things that I've always loved doing, I've always loved doing this, but my my favorite part of, of my business has been coaching people because it's a thrilling thing when you can have someone sitting in front of you and you can see potential in them that they don't see. And then you can help them to realize that potential. Because the only way you can ever really, you know, do that is if you can, you can inspire them to know that they're worth it. And you can inspire them to know that they have every single opportunity available to them that they want. And one of the things that's always been important to me, you know, life is funny. And we, re- we live patterns throughout our lives, but sometimes you have to kind of suss them out because they, they manifest in different weird ways. And one of the patterns that I've really reflected on in especially the last week, let me tell you what, is um, a part of my journey for since my entire adulthood really um, has been that sticking up for the underdog has always been something that I believed in. Helping people, serving people, trying to support people when they get bullied. I did a whole dissertation on workplace bullying. I've advocated for women who have been assaulted. I've advocated for putting protections in place so that people don't get mobbed online. I have I have fought online bullies for a damn year now in one way or another. Um, you know, sometimes people question the motives that I have. Um, I think one of the things that I've really reflected on in the last week that I've done, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of, but I think I can do better, is that my, I think, core purpose is helping people and is trying to support people and especially the underdog. I've always been a sucker for an underdog and Trump supporters are kind of like the ultimate underdogs, aren't they? You know, one of the things that we've been doing in my locals community has been working on just people expressing what they think saying what they think not being afraid practicing in a safe in a dare i say a safe space um before they do it out for the world what does this have to do with walkaway rallies well every walkaway rally i do i get up and i speak my mind and i say what i think and you know there's a lot that you lose when you stand up for yourself And you're always going to have naysayers. You're always going to have people saying, Carlin, you, you shouldn't say that. You should, how dare you? 
You're always going to have that. But you have to decide what's more important to you at the end of the day. You have to decide if it's more important to bend the knee and do what the mob wants you to do. That's certainly the easier route. It's the easier route. Or you have to decide, (laughs) am I going to stand my ground? You know, there's a game that women play. Some women, not all women, obviously. But I've played this game before. It's a game where you walk down the street and you walk in a street. Maybe not so much during COVID, but let's, let's imagine a world without that. You walk down the street, you walk in a straight line, you don't deviate from the line, you don't stop, you don't go from side to side, you don't, you don't move. You walk down that line and you see how many people bump into you. It's fascinating. I actually did this in Vegas. I did it in Vegas, I want to say like a year and a half ago, where, and try doing this game in Vegas, you're going to get bumped into by a lot of people, but I just walked down the street, walked in a straight line, did not deviate. If I saw someone coming at me, well, I would walk right into them. Because either they're going to move or I'm going to move. And um, the funny thing that happens is that, at least this, this is what happened to me in Vegas. I swear, hand to God, this is what happened to me in Vegas when I played this little game. And I promise this has a point. Is I would walk down the street and get bumped into by like 15 people. But I wouldn't get bumped into for the rest of the day. And it's, it's funny the way that works out because it's like, you you stay on your line. You walk that line. You do what you want to do. You stand your ground. You don't let anyone put you push you off it. And all of a sudden, people stop coming at you. Because you've shown the world that you're serious, man. That you're not going to be messed around with. Now, throughout this tour, we've been messed around with. Throughout this entire journey for me, I've been messed around with. I have had business relationships, long-term business relationships destroyed by socialists who wanted to to get me canceled for doing a PragerU video. I have had I have had um people try to come after my family. I've had death threats. I've had I get hate every single day and sometimes that hate is worse than others. Um and I'm not at all unique. I'm not at all unique from people who speak up, especially the, I, I, I've connected with quite a few women that this tends to be true of. Um, I'm not all unique of people who speak up and speak their mind and stand their ground and do not let people push them around because there is backlash to that. It's not always easy to do. And, but I think that the reason that I do it is twofold. And this is, maybe this is a good way to kind of like culminate this journey. The reason I do this is twofold. One, I will not, I lived most of my life shutting up and not saying what I thought. That's over. I have walked through on this, on this tour and in this year, I have walked through fire. I feel like I've crawled through glass. I feel like I've been, I've been literally chased. (laughs) I've been literally put in danger and I haven't backed down. And what I've learned is that I am strong enough to do this. And I know that sounds weird because, you know, you guys don't, listen, you guys don't see me weak. You know that um, this is probably the most vulnerable you've ever seen me. But it is always a question to me of if I'm strong enough to handle this. Um, and I, I think I'm doing okay. But the other thing that's actually much more important is that I've always known that the key to my success in life, in life, I really believe that like this, this aligns with why I'm here and what my purpose is. The key to my success in life is emotionally expressing myself. And I've always wanted to stand up for that underdog. And if anything, the defining factor of this year to me has been emotional expression, saying what I think saying it authentically, saying it genuinely. And when you express yourself emotionally, people are going to try to push you down. People are going to try to say, you shouldn't do that. People are going to say, how dare you say that? People are going to misinterpret what you say. People are going to lie about what you say. People are going to manipulate what you say. When you like, And that's true whether or not you're doing it in a small family group. God knows that happened to me before I was ever on the internet. 
Um, and it definitely happens when you're on the flipping internet, <laughs> but I wouldn't trade it for anything. I would not trade it for one single thing because throughout this journey, if one thing is true is that I've been true to myself, I've been true to what I believe, and I feel like I have more life than I've ever had in my life. I have so much life right now. It feels so, so, so amazing. And I know I'm probably not as enthusiastic as I should be because it's like almost midnight now and I'm like tired and, and I'm kind of afraid that I'm talking too loud. I'm gonna get a knock on the door and evicted from the hotel for talking into my computer and basically what happened last time. Um, but <laughs> I just, I, I wish that What I wish is that the people who are negative, the people who see this world as a horrible place, the people that see that they, they, or the people that think that they don't have an opportunity in this world, I wish they could see it like I do. I wish they could experience it like I do because I have never felt more alive in my entire life. I really haven't. And that is a gift that this year has given me. I mean, a lot of people haven't had a good year. I've had a great year, man. I've had a great year. This has been one of the best years of my life. And I'm so, so, so grateful to Brandon and Walkaway. I'm so grateful to the people, to, to all of you who watch. Um, even when I look like hell, I'm in a hotel room without makeup or proper lighting or microphone. Um, I'm so grateful for the people that have been in my corner, that have stuck by me from day one. Um, or day two, day three, day 30, day 106, who knows? Because different people have come and gone along the way. It's such a blessing. It is a blessing to be able to do something where the only requirement, really, is to be true to myself and to be authentic and to say what I think. And to not back down when people try to convince me that I shouldn't. Well... We're headed to, we're, we're in Atlanta today. We're doing a rally tomorrow. And then we are headed to an undisclosed location, guys. I cannot wait to share pictures with you of the place that we are spending election day. We're having one final walk away kind of gathering. I'm sure you'll, you'll see pictures of it and videos of it on the internet. And this is going to be like, I, there's nowhere else I'd rather be. I kind of wish my husband was here, to be honest. Like if my husband was here, that would be like the cherry on top. Um, but I'm so excited to spend election night with friends that I've traveled the country with, that I've gone through fire with, and um, that are just some of the best people I know in the world. And I think we're going to watch Trump win. I do. I do. But even if we don't, life goes on. And, you know, this the battle that we're fighting is bigger than Trump. Much bigger. But it's going to be a really different battle if he loses, I'll tell you what. Um... All right, guys, that's all my that's all my riff for now. I hope this made sense. I hope this was entertaining for some of you. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon.